Hi, my name's Chris, and the purpose of this video is to show you diagnostic and repair of your AC, your air conditioning um, evaporator core when it goes bad in a 94 GMC Suburban K1500 four-wheel drive. Uh, let me just quickly show you how you diagnose how you how you di diagnose it. Um, First thing you want to do is just make sure that you're losing refrigerant. Obviously, if you just had your system refilled and it's empty within a day or so, then you obviously got a leak. So what you want to do is go to the auto parts store or go to the mechanic and have them inject a UV dye into your air conditioning system. And I'm going to show you what the benefits of that being done is. Um, it's pretty pretty simple basically you just have that put into your system and you can go to your local auto parts store and get these funky glasses here and basically any black light will do the kit that I got it comes with this little pen black light now keep in mind that um it's been oh about five six months since I put this die in um, Right at the end of last summer, my AC stopped working, go figure. So I injected the dye, checked all around, couldn't find a leak. So I started looking inside, and then that's when I started to notice the dye. It was all over the seats, all over the interior door panels, the vents, everything else. And if you're like, if you're like me, and you have bad luck, that means that your evaporator core has gone out. Now the evaporator core is pretty difficult from what I understand to replace. You got to pull the entire dash out of the vehicle. This whole dashboard has to come out to get to it because it's underneath right beside the heater core down there in the HVAC box. <clears throat> so most mechanics, some mechanics actually are just researching online, they actually turn down the job. They wouldn't even want to do it because of the work involved. Um, so just a $1,500 job probably just on estimates, but like I said, since the dye was injected so long ago and it was on the seats and from driving the vehicle and stuff, a lot of it has came off and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pick this up on film, but I'm going to attempt to, um, there's a spot here on the door. See that glowing kind of glows green. Now this is without the glasses. You can even see it without the glasses. I don't know if I'm gonna put the glasses in front of the camera. Try this. I can do this. Quite hard to do. Hold these glasses and film and everything at the same time. There you kind of caught a glimpse of it. Now it's focusing on the actual dirt and shit on the lens. Either way, you kind of get the idea. It, it glows an anti-freeze anti green. Very bright green color. It'll glow. And if it's, if it's glowing on the inside of your vehicle and the vents, then that's your evaporator core, unfortunately. So you're looking at costly repairs. If it glows green inside the vehicle, on the seats and the door panels and the vents, and unfortunately your evaporator core has took a shit. <laughs> so um, I've never done this job before. No videos on YouTube. So hopefully this video will help somebody out with a similar problem. I mean, even if it's not for fixing this problem, they just want to remove their dash for whatever reason. Hopefully this helps. So. I, like I said, I've never done it, um, so we're going to be going by the skin of our teeth here. There's going to be a lot of editing involved, and I'm sure a lot of cuss words and everything. And since this is my daily driver, I'm going to have to get it back to a partially driving state. I mean, obviously I won't have the speedometer and all that shit to go on for a day or so, and depend on how long this takes, but as long as the steering wheel's there, the brake and the gas, I'm good to go. So, first things first, before you do anything to your vehicle... You know the routine. You must disconnect all 
your bat uh, power to the vehicle. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hop out. I'm not gonna show that because obviously, if you can't do that, then you probably shouldn't be attempting this. And a little disclaimer: uh, I'm not responsible if you do this and mess your car up. Um, I've heard stories of people doing this and they're not able to get things back together the way they were. So, a little disclaimer. I'm going to, the camera's basically just going to sit here. I'm going to kind of narrate what I'm doing. Um, like that. First thing first, disconnect your radio. Um, I believe the factory radios are pretty much the same. I have an aftermarket, but basically the same routine, I think. Um, let's see a few here. Okay. There's two little tabs on the top here. One here and one here and then there's two metal clips and since I've had this out like a couple days ago it just pops right out you might actually get like a screwdriver or something in there you basically pull this out and push down on the top to get these tabs it might help to open your glove box door Yes, I know I'm wearing my shirt inside out. If you see the tag on the back, it's trying to save my shirt from getting dirty on the outside and possibly getting stained. All right, so basically, get this out. Disconnect your antenna, your RCAs, everything that you have. If you have a stock radio, it should be pretty much similar. But here you can see little tabs that go in the top and then actually you know with this one it happens all the time there's these little metal clips and if you look on the back here and you don't see them don't be alarmed because they're probably stuck in these holes right down here so you just kind of get behind them and pull them out and they actually just clip onto the back Clip one to the back of this, like so, and then they just, those clips fit into the hole. So, you can set your radio aside, one of the many things. I recommend getting like a, a bag or a box or even like a container to put your screws in. I'll show you what, I, what I'm going to be using. Also, while I'm gathering my tools, um, I just wanted to mention that the only specialized tools that you should need for this is a steering wheel remover and a basic sock socket set, wrenches, screwdrivers, torx bits, things like that. Um, it helps to have a nice socket set, but I'm assuming you have them. But either way, here's. This is just like a hard-sided plastic container with individual drawers in it. So you can actually label what's what. And since we're going to be taking a lot of stuff apart, it doesn't hurt to label it. So get yourself a pen, and paper, marker, whatever to label because you're going to have a lot of screws and you probably won't get this done in the same day so your memory might if your memory's like mine you know you're going to forget a couple days later weeks whatever but um and the way the tools like i said steering wheel remover tool you're going to need because you're going to have to pull the wheel if you don't have that you can rent it from like AutoZone or buy one for like harbor freight um you're going to need a Torx bit set this is all different types of bits um, should have everything that I need and your socket set basic socket set um, I'll try to call out the sizes when I can see them as I'm going along here to help you guys out um, I'm just gonna grab this Torx bit this is a CT5 Damn, I'm good. It's a T5 Torx. And you want to remove 
it looks like there's four Torx bits screws that go around your uh, instrument cluster here. One on each corner. So just remove these. There's one on the uh, top left and then one on the left bottom. Now, somebody apparently has worked on this before and substituted in a Phillips. So yours shouldn't be the same, but hey, if it works, it works, I guess. <laughs> There's the Phillips screw. It's almost like a drywall screw, but it works, so whatever. <clears throat> okay, now this just pops right off. This little trim piece here. Move the camera so you can maybe see a little bit better. Yep, so this just pops right off. Um, actually, I need my key so I can put the put it into drive. So you want to pop your key in, just pull, pull all the way down, that way it's out of the way, and then it should come out relatively easy, just like so. Now obviously the headlight switch is still in, so we're going to have to want to disconnect that.